All right, we're here with Louis Dupuy with Julian's famous Cajun-style Cajun po' boys. How you doing? Good. And you? I'm tired. Well, really? Yeah. If you'd ever go to sleep at night. I do go to sleep at night, man. You wouldn't be tired. I do. I do go to sleep at night. Okay. So, you're still tired. I'm tired. I'm a little tired. I mean, I'm good. But, I, I mean, you know. I hear you. So tell me, we're, right now we're, we're talking about, um, today is the day, today is Julian's birthday, birthday. Right. 33 years. 33 years ago. In Julian. Acadiana. Yep. It's been a long time. It's been fun. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we opened up, where we opened up at, used to be a Kentucky Fried Chicken. It was the wow. first Kentucky Fried Chicken in Lafayette. Then uh, the building next to us was uh, a pizza inn. Right there on University used to be a KFC? Right where Julian's is mm -hmm. was a KFC. Right next door where Laura's is used mm -hmm. to be a pizza inn. Which really? Was, which was owned by Jack Ainsworth. Wow. Right where the uh, Washateria is, that used to be a, drugs, I mean, a, a grocery store. And that was owned... By Ashton Mouton's family. Mm -hmm. uh, he used to be a mayor of Lafayette. He had a grocery store. Had several of them. But anyway, it's all been sold. Uh, we bought it from, a, from a, a guy that had a liquor store there. And we opened it up as a liquor store in the restaurant. And one of them was going to do, the other one wasn't. And the restaurant opened up and... We ended up closing down the liquor store and added on to our seating. So that was. So, okay. Go ahead. So one side of the restaurant was a restaurant. Right. And the other side where, where that door is. Where, where the door was is. Was a liquor store. Was a liquor store. Wow. And we had liquor in there. We had beer. We sold beer. We sold liquor and the whole nine yards. And then when we saw that. It was causing more problems, the liquor store. Mm -hmm. uh, we ended up shutting it down and just opening up, uh, uh, adding seats to the to the restaurant. So that's how it started. Okay, so it's, did it start off with just Paul Boys or no? Yeah. The same menu, we just kept adding adding sandwiches, like uh, the real jewel. Mm -hmm. I was at uh, Jacob's one night talking with Billy and Glenn Jacobs. Uh -huh. After I closed down and went over there and had a had a, had a drink with them, and they had a guy and their their cousin by the name of Glenn Jewell. I think his name was Glenn, but I know his last name was Jewell. Okay. And he said, "I got a sandwich for you." I said, "What?" He said, "This is this is what what it is. Ham, I mean, roast beef, chili, cheddar cheese, and onions on a pork bar bread." Mm -hmm. I said, really? I said, well, I'll call it the real jewel. Left home, left, went back home, got in the next day, and then I remembered that they said that they were coming over, so I had to go get some some cheddar cheese and uh, something else at the at Piggly Wiggly, which was Piggly Wiggly at the time. Mm -hmm. They came in and ate it, and I let several other people eat it, and that's been on the menu now for probably thirty. 31 years you know mm -hmm. took a couple of years before we, we did that you know and that's that's the way it started it, it just adding this taking this off adding this and you know going from there in 33 years what is the most popular po' boy you think that people have asked for shrimp shrimp po' boy shrimp and then I would say the next the next thing would be our muffalata mm -hmm. next thing would be our Allen brother ribeye which has been added on about 15 years hmm. for that. So uh, it's, a, it's a six and a half to seven ounce USDA prime grade. So Right. Uh, it's like a steak. Yeah, for the, for the steak, you know. So uh, that's, that's it. Alligator sausage. Uh, of course, our roast beef. Mm-hmm. And a variety of the roast beef. A Cajun kicker, which is roast beef with ranch dressing, lettuce, and mayonnaise. Well, what what happened f 
for y'all to bring like, like I guess when did raps get popular? Like we were over, a, about a, seventeen years ago. Really? Eighteen years ago. That's when we we had a guy that was working for us and uh, he said you want to do a rap? I said, Well, I, I don't know what a rap is, but I said, well, <laughs> tell me what tell me how it goes and he showed it and we started uh, started with that. We had a tomato basil wrap. Mm-hmm. And we had a spinach wrap, and we've gone down just to the spinach wrap. And uh, but you can get anything on it. We have had people do an oyster wrap, uh, ribeye wrap, hamburger wrap. A raw oyster wrap or a fried? A fried oyster. Okay. Fried oyster. But I would do a raw oyster yeah. if that's what they wanted. Okay. Um, man. That's interesting. Like, I mean, in 33 years, what year was that? It was, 1985. Okay. It, to me, 85 didn't seem a long time ago. Uh, it doesn't. We opened up uh, during a all shortage, all crisis. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't know any better. We opened up and after we opened up. Right. Uh, about two months later, they started the uh, construction on the underpass. Yeah. Which was the only way to get to university coming from Karenkoro or I-10. And they started on the underpass. We didn't know any better. We just opened up and kept going. Kept yeah. going, kept going. And pe- how did you know that you had something good? I mean, like people were driving from how far to get a bow boy? No, oh, I've, I've got... I've, Today I've got people that travel from New Orleans to Houston. This is their stop. Uh, yeah. They're going. I've got people that come from Alaska that have eaten at the restaurant. They said they heard about us. Uh, yeah. A lot of it. The majority of our, our customers are word of mouth. Uh, it's. You give them a product. Uh, now, my daughter seems that she doesn't want me to have anything to do with the customers because she said she thinks I'm rude, but I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not rude. I, I joke a lot. Uh, I tease a lot. I make the kids cry sometimes. You make, you make kids cry. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm joking with them. But what, what do you do? Like, give me, give me an example. All right. Uh, do you have, you have any money to pay? Like, they, no. they don't know what to say about that. No, well, then go sit out in the car till you can get oh, a job. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. That, that's, that, that is... But, uh, I mean, it, it's all yeah. it's all. Done. But, that, but that, it's that's all the done thing, Louis, 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 like, even with sales, like, when I did sales when I was, like, 14, 15, 16 years old, they don't even sell the same anymore, no. you know? So, like, the, the mannerism of humor that you're giving people they they immediately think that that's a that's a crazy they don't know what they don't even know the kid don't even know what the mean that means well there's uh, no there's no creativity probably there with and that. It, well uh, yeah. the majority of the kids uh, really have fun with it mm-hmm. uh, matter of fact uh coach rayford leblanc who built uh a couple of our stores before we had to shut them down because of the oil crisis but uh, uh, his grandkids would come in, we're talking 30 years ago, uh-huh. they'd come in and eat, and I'd always give them candy, three suckers for each one of the kids. And uh, about six years ago, uh-huh. Boris LeBlanc, who is uh, uh, Bord LeBlanc's son, mm-hmm. Coach Rayford's grandson, they're traveling with their mother in Broussard, and they said, uh, she said, I'll take you anywhere you want to go. And they said, well, can you take us to the guy that used to give us the suckers when we would go into the restaurant? Mm-hmm. They're talking about me. So they remembered that. Yeah. Know? And uh, he's, he's in the uh, Army now, so we took care of him, you know. Yeah. So, it, it, you know. I've got a lot of good memories, a lot more better memories than than problems. You know, yeah. we've had we've all had our problems, and you work your way through it. It's 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 
not difficult, but it's not hard. And it's not easy either. Yeah. You know, you just have to take one day at a time. So. Yeah. Um, when you opened, do you remember any other po' boy places? Yep. You had Old Time. And okay. You, and you had Chris's. Okay. And there was a guy from, uh, oh, from Karen Crow that opened up a place. Right next to the Army uh, uh, recruiter, right behind uh, Rouse's, they opened up a poor boy place, and they were there. Uh, and there was one other place, Crickets, uh, and uh, Old Time hmm. and me and Chris. Right. Chris is, we're still here. So. Yeah. I mean, it's and it's still kicking. Yeah. You know, um, interesting. Interesting. I mean... The history of the of the po' boy, or the poor, I mean, how, what, what, I say po' boy, I mean, like, what is... Po' boy is, is uh, that originally, from what I've been told... Uh, from New Orleans. From New Orleans, right. and it was uh, some guys that had a little sandwich shop. Right. Uh, well, it actually wasn't a sandwich shop, it was just, you know, a place and... I'm trying to remember where it's at, and I, I think it's on St. Char- St. Charles? I, I think so. I know uh, Lydia, uh, her brother, had bought mm-hmm. uh, that poor boy place in New Orleans. I can see it in my head, but I can't. It's, it's like I can't yeah, remember where it's uh, at. Mother's. Mother's okay. restaurant. But this is, I think, even before Mother's, where, you know, where people, when the workers would get off, uh, off work and they would come on and say, hey, here comes the poor boys, you know, so, mm. and it was P-O-O-R-B-O-Y-S, and it's since been cut down to P-O-B-O-Y-S, right. so, that's how, that's how that started. Hmm. So. What is the cheapest po' boy price you remember? Two ninety five. dollars Wow, back in 85? Roast beef poor boy, I want to say a roast beef poor boy. Oh. That's crazy. Yeah. Even that's crazy, I mean... But, like, you you remember, you know, back in, like, the 50s and stuff, I mean, that was, I don't even know if that was around. I don't, I don't remember, well, I, I take that back, uh, Stop and Shop Grocery Store, uh-huh. which was now down the street from us, it was, uh, it's a, a florist shop. Yeah, across the street? Yeah, uh, and they had a shrimp pool boy that was to die for and they had several locations. They sold poor boys on Friday. Lent, you would stand in line sometimes 35 minutes, 40 minutes. Wow. Before, to get a poor boy. And uh, we actually are buying our bread from Longlanais, which is a, a, a cousin of mine. And uh, he's been selling poor boy, I mean, poor boy bread. Matter of fact, he, he he bakes for a lot of people. Evangeline mm-hmm. made. He does their poor boy bread. Uh, uh, he does. Uh, uh, I can't. Think he does a ton. Yeah, he does a, a ton. ton. Yeah, uh, yeah, big time ton. You know, to, to today, the, the only ones I can even think of are Who Parts, Longone, and Evangeline made. That's it. Yeah, and he does for Evangeline made. Yeah, and. Uh, another another company he does for, uh, and I, I'm having a senior moment. They're out of New Orleans. He has a uh, uh, he does a olive mix also. Mm-hmm. And he does a gambino. He d- he bakes all the van- all the bread for Gambino's bakery. So, really? Yeah. And he does. I think he does some for McAllisters and. Really? You, na- you name it. If you want a good poor boy bread, you got to go to Longlanais because mm. otherwise, it's just not the same. No, I mean it's you know the flake is a yeah. big deal. Yeah. yeah. So it's you know the, in the, to, to me there aren't a whole lot of flake French breads around anymore. Well, one of the things that we do uh, is that we put ours in a bun warmer, uh-huh. which makes the outside crispy the you know mm-hmm. the the top part of the bread and the center part we'll flip it over and make that crispy too right uh, 
uh, it just it just makes for a better bread. And a lot of people say, well, you changed bakeries. I said, no, we haven't changed. We've been using the same one for 30, uh, 33 years. Weather has a lot to do with baking bread. Yeah. And if it's muggy, it's going to be a little bit different than it will the next day. You yeah. can do the same batch over and over and over again. And consistently it'll be the same but some days are going to be better than the others so interesting yeah he does so you've had the same bread for 33 years yeah you same, know that don't happen all same, the time same muffle lot of bread hmm. too we'll have people that come from new orleans to pick up muffle lotas going to houston or yeah going back from houston to new orleans they'll pick up a couple of muffle lotas and take them home with them and to me, your, yours actually looks better than a lot of the ones I see in New Orleans. Well, we... I don't know. You've probably gotten that before. Yeah. We heat our we heat our meat and we heat our bread. So hmm. that way it's going to be, be crispy and it's going to be be warm to the, to the stomach. You know, feel good. Interesting. All right. The hamburger po' boy, how, when did you put that on the menu? We put it on about, I didn't have a grill mm-hmm. when we first opened up. And uh, I want to say 92 is when we added the hamburger. And because I used to, I, it started off as a hamburger salad. I mm-hmm. would make a julienne salad and take a hamburger and uh, cut it up, put that in. and uh, But it was 92, 93, we put it on and haven't haven't gone wrong since yeah i mean did, did you notice a, a spike in sales and when you did that yeah, yeah. okay well, a lot of people a lot of people don't know what a, po- a hamburger pull boy is they want a hamburger on a hamburger bun yeah and our 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 buns i mean our our uh patties are are made to fit right the the pull boy bun not not a uh not a hamburger bun, so that's right. why that's why we do it. Yeah, yeah I mean, I remember, you know, in our, in 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 probably from eighty eight to about ninety two, ninety three, there were some people that were doing the pull boy hamburger rectangle, yeah, to fit on the pull boy bun. Yeah, uh, I I don't remember no more than four people doing it, but you know, I, a patty is just as good. I mean, it, it, it's 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 good. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, to me, the bread is even better with the shredded lettuce. The bread, the bread, the bread makes it makes the whole thing better. Mm-hmm. And one other thing I would like to mention too is that we got one heck of a hot dog. Yeah, I... we use we use a Nathan's uh, 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 Nathan's wiener, and mm-hmm. I mean uh, we had a guy in today bought bought three for himself while he was sitting there at lunch. He ate three hot dogs. He ate three hot dogs. Hmm. To me, I, I, I can eat one, but that's that's about it. But it's a it's a hell of a hot dog. I don't eat hot dogs. Well, yeah, and you don't eat hamburgers either, do you? Yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much all I'm eating. <laughs> but I mean, I, I'll I'll eat I eat cow, man. That's about it. Yeah. Well, you got to eat a little pig once in a while. I, I really would rather not. Oh, what you don't eat ribs. No, I, I do. I, I mean, if I'm going to a place and I need to write about it, that's and actually to me, you write better about it when you don't eat all this stuff every day. I, well, that's true. Um, that's true. I, and that's what I've learned. Um, I grew up in a family that they they cooked too much, way too much. I mean, I, my grandmother won every candy cooking recipe f- ever, forever. Like that's she had like this state recipe for. You know, she for pralines. Yeah. And all I did as a child, I never, I don't know, man. I don't really, I, I've only had like two friends my whole life. So like <laughs> people are like, oh, that's sad. No, it's not. I learned so much stuff. Yeah. You know, from just being, uh, wanting to be observant. So I learned that. You know, the proper way to, you, you, you know, my, my grandmother probably made one of the best hamburgers I've ever tasted in my life. Yeah. And, and she would do it a certain way, and then she would take, she would not, she would do something in the oven with the bun that 
it, 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 it's almost like I don't remember how she did it, but she wouldn't serve you until it was done after a minute and you got it. Yeah. yeah. You know, with the bun. She yeah. put it in the oven a certain way. And it was amazing, you know, because w- when you hand somebody a, 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 one of them, one, a bun from the oven and it's hard. Yeah. It's not cool. No. You know, every time that's happened to me, I'm like, you, you no, we, you, we, this is not good. You ruined it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, but no, I grew up watching, right, but between my mother, father, both grandmothers, I mean, pretty much everyone, you know, I would love my dad to make a cookbook. Yeah. Because that's how much they actually cook. I grew up watching them and they would plate it and I would see it. And I, I didn't always eat that because I I really ate hamburgers every day. Like yeah. people don't realize that this is not a joke. But you know I ate everything they cook. But if it, if it was a preferred situation, I got a hamburger. Right. Now they thought I was crazy, and I think they sometimes still do. But no comment. You know. But whenever it came t- down to me understanding what it looked like, I got it. Yeah. Because I always, I saw it every day, you know, like I, one of the things that my grandmother made was crab sauce pecan. And people are like, what is that? Is that something that people have not heard of? Not that I know of. I mean, okay. everybody knows what a sauce pecan is. You can do it with crab, you can do right. it with shrimp, you know. But to me, when people would come over and they would make that. I remember people freaking out about that because they were like, well, I've never had that, you know. Like, yeah. I remember things like that. So yeah. it's, it's very interesting stuff, you know. But that's all they did was cook every, every I mean, four or five times a day. I have, I've had uh, my dad had a gentleman that would pick up in Lake Charles. It was the only place he would pick it up. Mm-hmm. And then he would bring it home, and he would barbecue it. And the first four or five times, I did not know what it was, because they wouldn't tell me. Mm-hmm. But it was coon. <laughs> and let me tell you, if I could find that recipe and do it right, the way it was supposed to be done, yeah, that was that was a, a very good. What was it? Like it was just raccoon. I know, but like cooked how? Barbecued. Barbecued. Coon. Barbecued. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> pull out, pull out the, pull out the glands, mm-hmm. and then barbecue it. Oh man, that was tender meat. It was good, very good. Yeah. But well, that's probably the weirdest thing I've eaten. I, I wish we could teach some raccoons how to, you know, do do tires. Yeah. They seem to. They love tires. I think. Well, no, they, like you know, put tires on a car. Because, like, literally, like, I've seen them, I've observed raccoons doing everything. Yeah. Like, and they work so well together that they could literally be IndyCar pit, pit crew if they learned how to do tires. <laughs> Dude, they're pretty amazing when they're working together. I'm like, <laughs> I, 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 would, I would agree. I would agree. I would agree. They're not playing around. And then I see these people with pets, like pet raccoons. Yeah. You know, I'm like, what? But no, um, my dad used to play games with me a lot and cook stuff, and he would try to fool me. Yeah. So that's where I got a lot of my, no, you put this in it. Yeah. You know, because I was always on the off offense with that, and he would pick with me something crazy. I mean, and he would cut it a certain way to make it seem like it was something else. Right, right. You know, so, and, and, and just like... <clears throat> Like, like when you, you could cut up a fish, if, it, if, it, if, you know, the, the, the size of the fish, like a, like a, a giant catfish is right. going to taste a lot more different than a smaller one. Right. But even if it's cut up in a different way, it's still going to have a different f- feel, taste to it. So back, in, back in the late, <clears throat> late fifties, early sixties, my dad used to mm-hmm. pick up out of Henderson, what was called the illegal catfish. Mm-hmm. They were under the limit. And I mean, you just cut the head off and and, and gut it mm-hmm. and fry it. Man, you talk about the best catfish you'd ever put in your mouth. Eat bones and all. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just just so tender. But you can't you can't find those today. 
And if freshwater you, catfish? Or freshwater really? catfish. Okay. But they were illegal because they were under the limit. Uh huh. They were sometimes they were maybe four inches long, five oh. inches long. I'm talking. You drop that in, and I mean it was like eating an appetizer. Today, that, today it's like way overcrowded. Yeah. You you can't you can't you can't. Uh, you I mean it's. You can't get them. Yeah. Can't get them. Can't can't which mean can't get them. You can't you can't buy illegal catfish. Oh catfish. no, there's they're just they're so many of them. I mean they're everywhere. They're, well, I've, I've never seen them, but any. Oh. Another story. Another story too. Uh, I used to have to catch them. Yeah, you because know, like. You'd have, you'd have, you'd have, you have some, I, I don't know how many varieties of catfish there are, but like, I know like in Lake Conroe, there was this huge catfish, like 55 pound catfish, 72 yeah. pound catfish, and they taste like chicken. Yeah. <laughs> like, like seriously, they're that, they're that big. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like you're, you like take a bite out of them and you go, are you sure that was catfish? Yeah. So, but you know, you go to Cocodry and it's a whole nother kind of catfish. You know, and you can slice that up and make that a crab trap, put that in a crab trap. <laughs> so, it, you, I've learned so much from from living in Homa, and then you live here, and then you go all these other places like Texas. It, like, everyone does something different. It, it, so, and they all eat things differently, you know. Well, now, I don't know how true this is, but I was told that one of the uh, best breakfast dishes down in, in uh, Alabama. Mm-hmm. It's mullet. I believe that. And I, I, I've never eaten it, so I, I, I can't say one way or the well, other. But uh, they do that in Homa. Mullet too. No, wow, no. I, I don't yeah, I, I've heard that more than once. Yeah. Um, I want to say, I don't want nobody to get mad at me, but like, um, I mean, Ponisha, it's called. <laughs> Like you go, I guarantee yeah. you they, 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 they I don't really think I remember there's there were some kids that would fish and they would try to go sell some of that and people would buy it and like you know they they do this every day yeah I mean little kids like eight nine years old wow but yeah I've definitely seen a lot being around that area, the Homa area, the, the Bayou Black area, the Dusan, the Gibson, um, Cocodry, Pawnee I mean, you may not want to go hang out in a bar, but, yeah. but, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's definitely interesting to fish there. We had a guy, uh, that played football at UL. We had opened up, uh, maybe, I don't know. This was, we were they were playing a game at uh, uh, North Texas State, and mm-hmm. his name was Andrew Martin, Andy Martin, mm-hmm. and his father owned a uh, uh, father or grandfather had a uh, shrimp processing plant, and that's where we bought our shrimp from was from out of, out, out of what we call down the bayou. In the Homa area. In the Homa area, Homa, uh, maybe even even further down, but. Andy was playing uh, football at North Texas State. Uh-huh. His grandfather was two two rows in front of. Us. Interesting. I, had a heart attack and died right there on the spot. At the football field. At the football game, they didn't tell te- they didn't tell Andy any- anything until after the mm-hmm. game. But uh, I still remember the days where they would come in and we mm-hmm. would buy our shrimp, and when they. What I what I liked about uh, Andy Martin's grandfather was when he told you a rooster could pull a freight train, he'd pull a freight train because if he said it's five pounds, it's five pounds. A lot of these places, uh, yeah. one I still will never buy from, and uh, you'd buy a five pound box and end up with three pounds of shrimp. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't see that. So wow, I I, I, w- I missed it since since we. They, I think they shut down the Martin Seafood Processors. I'm not sure if they're still there. In the Homa area? In the Homa. Interesting. Uh, 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 down the Bayou. What, what is called Down the Bayou? <laughs> it's on the way to New Orleans. I mean, on the way to uh, Buras and all of that. Um, I mean, there's... I don't know. I mean, Cogadry? No, no, no. 
I can't remember where it was, but I know where it was at. I, I probably hung out there a yeah. couple times, but but no, I mean, I, that's everybody says that in Homa. That's all they say is down to bite. Go down to bite. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the whole damn thing's a bite. That's it. Really? I know. I mean, it's there's one bite. Yep. And then you go into another big bite. <laughs> and keep going to the bayou, down the bayou. <laughs> and <laughs> you might not want to go jump in the bayou. No. But, yeah. Uh, but, no, I, I remember I dated a girl for, like, seven years. And her dad, they had the only dry shrimp factory. In, oh. in I, I remember that very well. Wow. I, I, I love dry I think shrimp. they still have it, too. A friend of mine, we, we would, uh, when I was... Before I got into the food business, we were I just sold my Culligan business, and I went to work with a cousin of mine, and we'd go to uh, uh, Plano every mm-hmm. six weeks to teach a, a, a selling school. And we would start off, we'd go down, pick up a pound of shrimp, and <coughs> take off for Dallas, and by the time we got to Dallas, there were no more shrimp left. Yeah. We'd no, eat, I... eat it like popcorn. <coughs> So those were the, those were the good old days, but I think the good old days are what you make of them. Uh, to me, I'm in my good old days now, and hope to stay. I hope to stay there. Yeah. Um. Somebody's gonna want to know where what that dry shrimp. His name was Lewis Bloom. Was the 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 father who had that 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 dry shrimp factory? It, it was it was downtown Homa. Well, we would get this off of Ridge Road. Yeah. The, and I mean... Well, he uh, would drive here. He, I remember he had this big white Chevrolet, like 3500, and the back of it was this huge dry shrimp yeah. thing. And, like, they would drive to the, in this area. Well, they probably did. And to me, that I, lo- I love dry shrimp. Mm-hmm. I just do... I, I like the salt. I'd be amazed if they're not still doing it. I've 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 heard people telling me that they would dry their shrimp mm-hmm. in a dryer. Yeah, a washing machine dryer. Really? They just put it in and they didn't do that. <laughs> no, they, they they spread them out on the on the docks and put yeah put uh, uh, screens over it oh, to yeah. keep the flies off. And, Interesting. Yeah. So. Well, um. <laughs> You get thirty three years, man. Yeah. You know, just think, I, I've been married going on forty eight with my wife. So, so I mean, and then you just got into the restaurant world. I used to, I used to help uh, Gerald DeFez when he was the general manager at Don's downtown. Uh huh. I'd go in, uh, had my Culligan business, and. I'd go in for lunch and help him, help him serve uh, beer and mixed drinks. And yeah. I'd always wanted to be in the restaurant business. And after I sold Culligan and went to work a couple of years with Life Investors and did nothing, I bought a piece of property, the property that I'm at where Julian's is. And uh, it wasn't seven months later, uh, the place burnt down. And we had to do something with it. So I said, well, go ahead. We'll open up the liquor store or the yeah. pool bar business. And one of them's going to make it and one of them's not. So I'm amazed the liquor store never made it. Well, I'm kind of glad it didn't because... Yeah. Uh, Today, that that would be the hot spot. Well, yeah. <laughs> there, was a, there was a one two blocks down from us. But then that, that eventually... I mean, it was a full-scale liquor store. Mm-hmm. And that closed down, you know, years ago. So, cool. Well, man, here's to another thirty-three years. Boy, that God, thirty-three years. That make me a hundred and some, a hundred and a hundred and eight. Hey. No, hundred and five. Hundred. Wow. You never know. I might invent. <laughs> I am. I might invent something <laughs> that might make might make that happen. <laughs> Well, Kevin, I hope not. <laughs> so. No, man. I I know one thing. You know, um, celebrating the the restaurants that have been here for a long time 
is something I do care about quite a bit. Um, to hear of a, of a restaurant being here 33 years and to see, you know, like there's, there's only really three po' boy places that have been here 33 years. You know, when you, when you look at that and you see all these articles that keep coming out and all they do is say, Hey, go try this place, go try this place, go try this place. And I look at that online because I see it a lot. Yeah. And I, I'm just, to myself, I just sit down and I think to myself, you know, well, they, do they realize that, you know, Acadiana was built by these businesses that have been here for 30, 40, 50 years. Yeah. You know, sometimes I don't think they think about that. Well, they're, they're, it, it's, it's all the new hype. Yeah. You know, you got to hype somebody. Yeah. To, to get them, I can remember when we opened up. Uh, right next door to us was a, a pizza place, and we went through what we call parking wars because right his, parking lot. His, his, yeah, his manager would not let our customers park on their lot. Right, and they would move them or have them towed. <laughs> and uh, that's crazy. Uh, when we he told the owner at the time told a friend of mine that was an electrical. Uh, working for the uh, electrical engineer mm-hmm. he said I give that man six months and he's going to be out of business and when we opened up you had Stop and Shop you had Toby's you had Jacob's you had uh, uh, right across the street was a, a, a guy that had a hamburger place uh-huh. gas station and right behind the gas station in the hamburger place he had a, a Joe Turk he had uh, uh, dominoes. People were always right. gambling for dominoes. You had short ba- uh, the short base lounge. And All that in that little area? In that little area. And I'm the only one that's left. Wow. Out of all the places that were there, I'm the only one that's, that's left. That's a lot of stuff, man. That's like Little Vegas in, well, in that's, Lafayette. That's what you called Four Corners. Okay. Because there were four restaurants at each each one of the corners. Okay. And that's where that's where the that's where the name got. You know. Right. Anybody in town knew where Four Corners was. Uh, I think Four Corners has taken a wrap. Yeah. Over the last several years, well, the last thirty three years since I've been there, because yeah. you know they don't say uh, that this crime happened at such and such a place. They say it happened in the Four Corner area, which I have a hard time believing that it's, it could be six miles away, but uh, it's still the Four Corner area. And we fought back and forth mm-hmm. with several places over that, you know, newspapers and uh, radio stations, yeah. but we're, we're still there. Yeah, and it's not going anywhere because they'd have to move quite a bit of cement. Right. Right. <laughs> right. But no, I mean, you know, today it, I, it's just interesting to hear that, you know, about all that. Cause how how uh, vibrant that little area was that little at that area time. That little area was... Because uh, well, that's uh, still a block away from you. Well, it's not really. I mean, I it's guess it's block. like... It's a it's block. A, it's yeah. a block. It's, but, a, it's exactly a block away. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then i got to make another plug. You know where Royal Florist is? Across the street, yeah. Yeah, right down. Well, like around the corner. Right across from that, uh, probably one of the first, <laughs> what is it, uh, barbershop. It's across no, no, the street no, from no, the barbershop. No, 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 no. Oh. That, that, that's, uh, the Florist is, uh, Royal Florist is right by uh, Rain State Bank. Okay. 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 That building was the original Don's Seafood Hub. Oh, wow. And that was that was back in the eighties when when they did that eighties uh, nineties uh, mm-hmm. when, when Don left uh, uh, the group. He still owned part of Don's downtown, but he opened up his the, the group uh, Don Seafood Hut, mm-hmm. and they've since moved out to where they are on Johnson Street. So yeah. you have you have a lot of a lot of places, a lot of food places that were right there within a within a two mile area well t- tell me one of your favorites um that has been here for 
you know, just as long as you've been here, somebody that you feel like should be talked about um, that they don't they, they don't get as much talk as they used to. In the mix of all these new places coming in, you know what I'm saying? I was disappointed to see uh, Guidry's Reef uh, closed down. Yeah, across uh, from Pinhook. Uh, they had a good hamburger too. <laughs> well, they had a excellent, <laughs> an excellent crab or grot. Yeah, crab meat or grot. I would I would say uh, we're, we we've changed so much. Uh, my wife and I over the last. Uh, 40 years that Mm -hmm. you know we've got our certain restaurants where we go in and we get like if I'm going to go get crab meat or gratin today or oysters bienville I go to Riverside Inn that's the only thing I'll eat there then I got uh, you know different restaurants you go to more restaurants than anyone I know you do well uh, but again we're not eating as heavy as we used to yeah but you still go to quite a few yeah. Like you do. Like I, I, I don't know anybody that tries more restaurants than you. I don't. Well, I, and I try to stay local. Yeah. You know. Yeah, local. but I mean, sometimes you gotta. I mean, like you know, if you're in Houston, you're gonna go find a place in Houston that's yeah. similar. So yeah. it's. But. No, I don't know anybody. I, I don't. I, I will say this, and I, they've never given me a plug for it. But um, one of my favorite. I've got two good restaurants that mm-hmm. I like to go to. T.J. Ribs for the ribs in Baton Rouge and Rue 61 on Blue Bonnet is to die for. They've got a good hamburger. they got great oysters. they got great mm-hmm. portobello stuffed portobello mushrooms. I mean, it's, it, it, it's to die for. Uh, Interesting. I'm not too sure. I, I, now, you do know that T.J. Ribs is move, moving to Lafayette. I, I I did not. Yeah, well, they're moving out in the, in the Karen Crow. Yeah. Acme Oyster Grill is moving into Karen Crow area. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, Karen Crow. Karen Crow's about to get crazy. Karen Crow Scott. I think Best Stop is opening another place in, in uh, Karen Crow. Probably, probably the. Or Billy's one one of them. Don't get mad at me. No, I, I, no, <laughs> I, no, I'm not. I'm not mad at you. No, no. If I got it wrong, yeah, you know. Yeah, well, y'all can get mad at him. That's what I'm not, saying. Not don't, don't get mad at him. Not me, so. But no, um, once again, dude, thanks for talking about some of this. Well, yeah, uh, food is a good place. Uh, uh, a lot of people forget about us because we're not on the beaten path. Right. You know, uh, people that people that are eating with us today more than likely are coming to eat at our place yeah. or recommended by someone off the highway, yeah. you know, uh, saying, "Go, to, you want a good pool board, go to Julian's, you yeah. So it's been fun. It's been a long 33 years, but I'm, I'm looking forward to keeping it going. So Cool. Well, happy birthday. All right. Well, thank you, Kevin. Thank you. All go right. check out Julian's at 1900. West University. West yeah. University in Lafayette, Louisiana. To go is 23005, excuse me, that's my cell phone, 232-5168. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. No, no. <laughs> thank, no. You, thank you, Kevin. I appreciate Dude, it. Dude, thank you for everything. All right, um, couldn't, couldn't, Couldn't by any chance say of anybody who supports more music in Acadiana that y'all don't know about and, and more food in Acadiana that y'all know about. I'm telling you, I've gotten the text messages for the last five, six years of everything this dude has eaten <laughs> in Acadiana. It's a lot of stuff. So, All right, buddy. Thank have you. a good day. All right.